All right. Um, anyone in here, crypto investors? Just curious, put in the chat box area if you are. I think we all are, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Um, State Farm investor. Not sure how that stock looks, but I know it's a joke. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I would like to be. Okay. Um, basically, the, the strategies that I'm using with Forex is also applied with, uh, with crypto as well. Um, actually, we are seeing some rising happen, and we'll kind of be going through those if, if you guys are seeing if there's a good amount of people in here that are also investors. <clears throat> the crypto market um anyways with uh let's let's check out a couple of them now we are live on instagram and while i'm going through some of the crypto i'm actually going to release a poll where you guys can choose which currency pair you you guys want me to to, um to analyze it should show up on your screen now so just Make a vote on there, which ones you would like me to analyze. Oh, lots of uh, Euro USD off the bat. Okay, I'll get to the to the poll real soon. Uh, but for now, going to be looking at some of the some of the crypto. Uh, I mainly do forex trading, but with crypto, uh, just because recently there is starting to be a boom. Um, well, there was a boom previously, but I feel like it's going to be happening again. So I will show you guys what what I see here with crypto. Um, as you guys probably know, price had, uh, uh, let me actually delete this. There we go. <clears throat> With Bitcoin, uh, pretty much the price was being overbought as price was uh, getting stronger and stronger. On the RSI was showing that price is getting weaker. We can actually see that better on the weekly time frame here, but there's that divergence happening there. Um, so basically, price had had a dip. Uh, that dip that happened was around that like fifty percent mark, which is a it's a good retracement, good uh, PRZ area that it had dropped down to. Um, so if you can see, price came perfectly down into the fifty sixty one point eight area of the fibs, and then now it's spiking up. Uh, should be expecting for price to reach the previous high at least uh, into the zero, zero area or the zero percent, I mean. And so yeah, back, back into the 61,000 range and I would say even higher into like 77,000 range for, for crypto. Uh, it's, it's basically what, what happens most of the time. Every time there's a spike with crypto, basically history repeating itself price comes down and then continues to rally back up so that's kind of what's happening here and one thing as well is if you notice with uh with bitcoin bitcoin is usually controlling most of the other uh altcoins as well um so one of the things or one of the altcoins i'm looking at is doge so as there is a rise in, in Bitcoin, there's also, as you can see, a rise in, in Doge as well. Um, yeah, there's ADA as well. There's all these other altcoins uh, going up as well. Um, so yeah, I have, have some ADA. Uh, 
but yeah, with with the forex strategies and and everything that were that um, I know, it's pretty much the the exact same thing. I don't know if you guys can notice the type of pattern that's going on here on the daily time frame, uh, where you can see here, here, kind of this little dip right there, showing that price is expected to reverse right in this area, and then it's just spiking up. So this is the reversal pattern getting into the start of the uptrend, uh, getting into the higher highs and higher lows. Do you see previously it has um, this previous high over here? So it had some rejection off of this area. We're expecting for price to go higher, do higher low, and continue the rally into the uptrend from there on. I would say at least the 50% or 50 cent mark for Doge and uh, 50 cent being all the way up here. I would say into the 75% or 70, 75 cent area, even to a dollar, I can potentially see that happening. Might take a while, but potentially into the dollar range for that one. Anyways, um, okay, looking at the pulls here. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions inside of this webinar, there is a Q&A area. You can ask your questions there and I will answer, um, I'll answer as, as many as I can. And actually, before doing the, the actual technical analysis, I do wanna get into a strategy, um, real easy strategy that you guys can start applying instantly onto your charts and potentially um, use it to help you out with your trading. So one of one of the strategies is that that I use is what's called the the two well 200 MA it's the so it's the settings that I use MA stands for moving average and basically this is an indicator um, I actually had learned about this indicator from uh, it was from Tony Robbins. He had done interviews with millionaires and billionaires that are investors uh, or business owners. And I, I believe the book that I read was called uh, Un Unleash the Power Within. I think that's a documentary. I think it's like Unbreakable or something like that. Uh, so basically, one of the... Uh, one of the... Uh, one sec, reading the messages. So one of the uh, the strategies there, or one of the investors, I mean, had mentioned that what he was doing was he was looking, he was mainly using this 200 moving average mainly for stocks. And so I was also looking at that as well, how, um, how with stock trading, if... Like, let's say if I pull up the Apple stock. With the, with the Apple stock um, and the 200 moving average, what that investor would do is look on the daily time frame, and then, um, and then have the 200 moving average. So by the way, um, if you guys want to be able to add this onto your chart, and are not familiar, just go on to indicators. You would look up moving average. It's gonna be the one that's moving average. Make sure it's not exponential. It's the simple moving average. Once you add this onto your chart, it will show on there, you, you have to adjust the settings for it. So if you can see it's on mine right now, this blue line. Um, you can adjust the settings by double clicking on that blue line, or if you go on the left-hand side, click on the settings, go into inputs, uh, change the length from nine to 200. And so if you can see, it's already on here, this uh, purple one. Now, basically what that investor uh, that was being 
interviewed by Tony Robbins was uh, he, he was mentioning how he's he's mainly buying when the the price is above the 200 moving average and then shorting when price is below the 200 moving average. So, so I also did that. I, I went on to, to look at stocks and I put 200 moving average on there and, and was kind of realizing certain things that I noticed with the 200 moving average um, that he didn't explain in the interview, but through like looking at back testing, if you can actually see what happens when price is above the 200 moving average, it hits off of it kind of like support and it just bounces off these, these 200 moving average when price is uh, above the 200 moving average. And when price is below, then it's most likely going to be hitting like resistance unless it breaks above. So it's just kind of going off of going off the 200 moving average as like a, like a support area. Anytime it hits it, it would bounce off. So if I look at Bitcoin here, um, now it didn't hit it off the, the weekly here, but if I go on to the daily, we can see it did break through. Right now it's kind of like at that resistance area. If price is below, it should be hitting like resistance and potentially dropping down unless it breaks and continues going up it will be going into the uptrend, but like I, I noticed for any any type of uh, currency, like or like crypto, it could be stocks, it could be fiat currency. The 200 moving average is pretty consistent on all of them, where it plays like support and resistance. If you don't know what support and resistance is, I can't really cover that here, but I can go over like the the basics. Um, it, it just bounces off it bounces off like a resistance. So like it'll hit and then it'll bounce off. If it bounces, uh, that's considered resistance. So you can see like in this area here, it's also kind of hitting like resistance and then coming down. Um, and then when price is above, you'll usually be seeing price come down, hitting this area like support and then bouncing up. It's just multiple, multiple times where you'll notice the 200 moving average be hitting like support and resistance. Now, the daily time frame is way too, way too long. Uh, it's good for stocks because stocks is, I would say, more of like buy and hold. Um, you can also do day trading using this with stocks, but I use it with fiat currency. And basically, like, you know, let's look at this uh, Euro CHF trade. That was called. Um, I'll mainly use it off the four hour time frame. And the reason for that is because the four hours is where I'm looking for trends. I'm looking for lower lows, lower highs. So anytime I see the price at around that 200 moving average, then I'm looking to, to sell. Um, either sell or buy, depending on how it's going. So like right here, overall, with Euro CHF, market was flowing down. Uh, where's my tool? So mar market's flowing in a downtrend. And it, if you can see with the 200 moving average, price, it, it does its lower lows, lower highs into that 200 moving average, bounces off, have the lower low here, up into the 200 moving average, back down, the lows are right here kind of consolidating sideways there, but still hitting 200 moving average. And it just keeps bouncing off of it. In this area it did break above and I re-entered when price dropped below the 200 moving average back into its place. And I actually caught the sell, uh, when was that? Like late June, uh, catching that, that longer term sell. Um, so that's pretty much how I use the 200 moving average. It, it's not my main thing that I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking mainly at the price action, but using the moving average more as like an indication of seeing when it's going, uh, when it's hitting off of a certain area or if it's going with the trend, like bouncing off of moving average, just a, a specific strategy that I'll use to add on to improving my trades. <laughs> So 
if you're not using it, you can start using it. And, um, and what I would actually suggest is doing back testing, looking at previous price action and just seeing how, seeing how the 200 moving average flows and how it bounces off of certain areas. Um, and so, sometimes it's like really perfect. And if you can, if you can mix it with like Fibonacci or something like that while going with the trend, like let's say high, low, and as price is coming up, seeing that it's hitting around that 200 moving average right there while mixing it with Fibonacci. And it's just mixing everything together, being able to spot out when's the best time to trade it. And then zoomed in for the better entry on a breakout. All right, so hope hope that's pretty helpful for you guys. Um, now let's start analyzing some charts. Your USD, USD JPY. Uh, actually, end the poll and show you guys the results here. So we're mainly going to be doing the Euro USD, USD JPY in second, also GBP USD, and GJ. Seems like. A lot of you guys on GJ as well. All right. So, by the way, appreciate um, you guys for being in here. And again, I see new people joining in. If you have any questions, put it inside the Q&A area. Uh, I'm going to answer one right now. So, Donald, you said what size EMA you use. Um, that one that I was just discussing right now is the simple moving average. So it's not an EMA. The, the EMA is the exponential one. EMA I'll use for a different uh, type of strategy, but when it comes to indicators, um, something to realize is that's not my main thing that I'm looking at when it comes to trading. Uh, it's, it's like the secondary thing. So the main thing is going to be the price action strategies uh, and using indicators as like extra, extra confirmations. Um, okay, so someone said, is it worth putting a 100 uh, into Bitcoin or should I look for smaller investments? So 100, I feel like you would get, you would get more bang for your buck um, putting it into like Doge or like ADA, um, so, some altcoins, just because like, you know, with with the price of Bitcoin being at somewhere around forty four thousand right now, uh, let me actually confirm. Bitcoin is at four forty five thousand now. Um, you know, you're not really buying it too much of a uh, of a discount right now. Uh, if you were to get Doge, it's twenty five like twenty five cents. I think now it's at twenty six cents. So 26 cents per doge, if that goes to like 75 cents, you know, it would be a, a pretty good increase off of a smaller investment. Okay. Uh, what's the target after it bounces off 200 MA? So as far as if you're mentioning about take profit targets, um, the take profit targets, I don't, base it off the 200 moving average. Uh, what I would do is like, I'll use things like uh, Fibonacci to help me out with take profits, but it's basically like, I, I'll draw this out to help you out here. Um, so let's say if we see like a lower low, lower high, like it's going into a downtrend. And let's say the moving average looks like this. So it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. Okay. So let's say that's the moving average line right there. I would be looking to sell right in this area here, the lower high area when price is going into a downtrend. And my take profit when I'm selling there, I would need more confirmations. Uh, but when I'm selling, and why 
is it not showing? I'm probably too far in time frame. One sec. A anyway, so if I'm selling there, I'm mainly looking to catch that trade to that previous low or even lower based off the Fibonacci. So like from here to here, like I would either catch it at, at here, the first previous low, or even to negative 27%. Usually negative 27% would be like my take profit too or something like that. So hope that answered your question. Uh, what's the price action strategy? Price action is looking at the price, um, looking at how the price is moving. So things like support and resistance, uh, it's it's mainly going with the trend, but also reading the candlesticks, being able to see like when a breakout happens, when's the best time to to get in. Um, it's kind of a, a lot of different things together. <clears throat> okay, so let's go into Euro USD. Check out what's happening there. Okay, so currently right now it's in the sell zone. Um, with EURUSD, we can see that, well, on the bigger time frame, right here it shows like a reversal pattern going into the downtrend. Um, mainly also looking to see if it breaks this previous low right here, which is why I made the sell zone or the sell box area um, below this previous low over here. So throughout this entire area, it's a sell zone. It doesn't mean sell now. Uh, what it means is just look for opportunities to be selling. So throughout this entire area here, I'm going to be looking for sales. And that means going into smaller time frames and spotting out more of like seeing lower lows, lower highs, you know, and, and selling on the lower highs into the downtrend. So as of now, um, there is no trade uh, just yet, unless we're doing long term. But yeah, I'm going to be catching more of like the short term, quicker trades uh, for these areas. So, I'm going to be looking for sales on Euro USD. And as far as correlation pairs, so Euro USD is pretty much the exact same thing that happens with GBP USD. So, I'm going to be looking at GBP USD. All right, so currently on a sell for that, I do have a pending buy order just in case because there is a potential chance that this will be uh, going up a bit just because of like, there's strong, there, there is a strong support right in this area here. So there's a chance your USD might be going up. Uh, same with GBP USD. So if it was to go up, I actually have some secured profit here and then a pending order when it goes into the uptrend. Basically for the for the uptrend, it would be waiting for it to, to break a certain price to continue going up. But GBP USD and Euro USD are basically showing the exact same thing of price expecting to, to uh, drop down. So if you can see price came down, came up into the 50, 61.8 area, and then now it's rallying towards the downtrend. Um, now this is like that early entry, early entry on the right shoulder, if you can kind of see there how there's left head and then right shoulder there. Kind of similar with what's happening with Euro USD left head, right shoulder, it's, it's just formed a little differently, but overall showing kind of the same thing. Um, give me one sec, got a text message. Okay, yeah, plan, actually current news, um, update you guys on something, planning on closing escrow on a property pretty soon. That's so why I've been pretty busy um, lately with, with certain things, other, other investments. 
Uh, let's see. Reading some of you guys' questions here. Uh, Will I be going into depth training on those strategies? So it depends on uh, which strategies you're talking about. But if if you're talking about the 200 moving average, I kind of went into like a quicker quicker type of training for that, um, but won't be taking too long into covering the 200 moving average, j just because this is mainly for the technical technical analysis. Uh, Okay, so another question just came through. Um, let's see, thank you for answering previous. So if it's a downtrend breaks down uh, retest, you enter on a smaller time frame, break and retest 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah. So 15 minute being the smallest time frame that I go down to. Um, but if I see that it's it's overall like in a selling area, then I could go on to the smaller time frame and then get in for those trades. So like with the Euro USD one, throughout this entire area, like if I zoom in into one hour or 15, as I mentioned, the smallest time frame, like right now would not be the best time to be selling because you know it's it's previous it's currently at its low. Uh, until I see like a nice clear like lower low lower high type of thing, then uh, I'm looking to sell in those areas, but. As of now, it's kind of like consolidating sideways, like not really showing too much. And it's bouncing off this uh, previous support over here. So just keeping that keeping that in mind. Have I looked into AMC? Um, not, since, not since it had its big boom with the AMC. Uh, but ever since then, no, I haven't really looked at that actually making me curious to want to check it out. Is there another big boom? Yeah, I was I was looking right here. So I actually here's here's my notes where I had definitely overvalued and I was right. Uh price didn't continue passing this area. It was yeah it, it was definitely overvalued there. Um so if you see right here I I mentioned like pump and dump. Uh, yeah, so I was expecting for the for the downfall for sure. Um, but yeah, that I can potentially see it rising up if it breaks through this area and then just starts going into the uptrend because it's kind of like reversal thing there. And as I mentioned with 200 moving average, like right now it's hitting off the 200 moving average. So it's most likely going to be going up. But yeah, I, I mainly focus on the forex side, so uh, I do I do go into the stocks, but I just want to keep you guys on track with the forex. Forex is definitely a lot more volatility. Um, stocks has it sometimes when it's like these type of things, but yeah, it's like the <laughs> you you don't really know when certain things like that happen. You know, GameStop that big boom that happened, that was pretty crazy. <clears throat> um, all right, and so this question, do I do synthetic trading? So I'm not exactly too sure what you mean by some synthetic training. trading. Uh, I don't know if maybe I feel dumb by not knowing that, but yeah, I'm not too sure what you mean by that. I know there's lots of different trading strategies, so with mine, it's just mainly price action and keeping it as simple as possible. Uh, by the way, make sure to put the questions inside the, the Q&A area. Okay, I'm going to be answering uh, like one more. Uh, okay, so I'll be answering one more and we'll do Q&A later on after, after some more analysis. Okay, so yeah, I've, I'll be doing the top down analysis pretty soon. I guess I'll, I'll do one other one since that was a quick one. Uh, 
could EU be a potential buy if it breaks, if it doesn't break the support? So no. Um, and unless there's like a strong reaction off this area and then it goes back into this area. So it has to go above this area here in order for it to be like more on the buy zone. Because looking at, at the price action here, like it already broke through and it's already going into like a downtrend. If you see right now, it's at the low. So it's probably going to be a short term um, uptrend, but then back into back into a downtrend. So th this sell zone is, is the main area to be looking for. Unless, as I mentioned, it, unless price goes up into this area, then then it will be like different. But as of now, it's it's uh, mainly doing lower lows. So. All right, so back to analysis and I'll be doing some top downs. USD JPY was one that was requested. And I think it was GBP JPY as well. Okay, so top down analysis, I'll just erase everything. Show you guys what I'll be looking for. All right, USD JPY. I'll go out into the monthly just to see a further view. Uh, Okay, weekly, we see price broke above, divergence that it shows up there. Okay, we see that um, overall with price action, these highs, these highs doing higher highs, we do see the higher lows happening here. Was to create a channel, see what things look like. So it's not that strong of an uptrend for sure, but it, it is an uptrend. Um, this would have been that make or break type of area right there where it was at the 200 moving average being that price uh, Price was pretty much at that like resistance area. Okay, looking at this, let me actually do my fibs, see what things look like on this side. And actually I got a a bit caught up um, going through a couple questions, but the Forex Forex factory looking at news. So we have a uh, high impact on USD, nothing during the London session, but during New York session, we have high, high impact on USD uh, pretty much throughout the entire USD uh, or New York session. Okay. Um, so USD high impact. Okay, so right now it's at it's at the high. It should be going into. Well, it is in an uptrend right now. Um, but even though if I'm expecting for price to get up to this area here. or even higher, um, you know, that's about one, 
It's about a thousand micro pips, a hundred pips on the way up. Um, but I, I wouldn't get in just yet. Um, just because I'm, I'm mainly looking to buy the lows or buy the dips on the uptrend. So it's, it would be mainly like in these areas here, these dips to buy. So right now it's at the high. Uh, I would be looking more for price to come down a bit and then to continue rallying up. So buying, buying at a, at a lower price. Um, so for this one, kind of like around the, the 300 range. And then if it shows something here to continue going up. Um, yeah, but nothing, nothing too clear just yet. Uh, you know, we're, I'm not buying based off fundamentals or anything. I'm just looking at the price action. And as of now, based off of what I do, I don't, I don't buy the highs of an uptrend. And hopefully we can find some, some other ones that will show uh, a better one. Usually through these technical analysis, if you've been here in the past, you'll see that um, the ones that I do call out are more likely going to hit. So let's let's check out GBP JPY. Since you know GBP JPY kind of very similar to GBP USD from what I'm seeing here, uh, since we have like the GBPs and JPY is also um, actually JPY is showing that it's going into an uptrend, but there was a divergence which is potentially going to be dropping down so I'm going to be looking at that as of now with gbp jpy if you can see it it is doing a higher low here previous highs right here so it's kind of hitting off of it and we're just going to see is it going to continue going up or going going into a downtrend from there um More price action there. So it's basically hitting double resistance in this area here. There is divergence on bigger time frame. Yeah, big divergence happening there. That's the resistance it's hitting off of. That's the poor, chop the price some more. Okay. So looking at this, uh, we should be expecting for price to drop down. If I do a Fibonacci on bigger time frame here from all the way up here, high to low, price is currently at that 50, 61.8 area, which is perfect. Like there's lots of, there, there's lots of things showing me here that this is my sell area. This is where I'm looking to sell. Looking to get in for a sell and basically looking for the sell all the way into this area. So this would be my sell zone. Doesn't mean I get in and place a trade from up here all the way down here. It could just mean I'm getting in for quick trades, uh, quick trades on the way down. So let's look closer. Delete this, okay. All right, down to the 15. Uh, 
Okay, so this is actually one thing with, with trading, you gotta be patient on some of these trades. Uh, you don't wanna just rush into a trade. And um, so with this one here, I can actually potentially see that it's going to be, uh, I see the reaction happening up there, but I, I wanna see price drop down to around here then possibly it's gonna come back up, do something like that and then continue to drop down. Just based off of what I see and like the 200 moving average here, looks like it's probably gonna be doing something like that. So if you take a screenshot of this, see before and after, it's most likely gonna do something like this. Um, and so right now would be too early to get on, on the trade for GBP, JPY. Uh, let me see if there was any GBP news or I don't see anything but the USD the USD might affect how this moves so we'll we'll see um, how things look during the New York session um, <laughs> by the way um, if you guys don't know it's well it's really important to it's really important to analyze your your trades as good as possible because if you think about it like at the scale that i'm currently at each of these trades could could potentially make me my next five grand you know my next eight grand my next you know so it this um that's why i usually take around one to two hours for my trading uh, when I when I do my trades, and it's super important to, to make sure to be like spot on on these. Um, so, so yeah, that's uh, GBP JPY, uh, and also you got to be patient. You don't want to just like rush into it. Even though if I see that it's a sell, I'm not just going to place a sell right now. I want to see more more things to tell me that it's going to be dropping down. Because if I do place a sell now, it's most likely going to be dropping, but it's not like, it's not giving me a lot of things that are saying like for sure sell now. Um, that's when you get like those sniper entries. Okay. What app do you use to trade crypto? Um, For trading crypto, you can use uh, Hugo's Way. Hugo's Way is a good uh, app. And actually, you can log into Hugo's Way on MetaTrader 4. So hope that helps. Um, Donald, you said best to have two to three confirmations. I actually look for three minimum, not even two. So two is just like, yeah, I wouldn't even get in on a trade if, if there's just two. And these these strategies are actually like, even if it's one of the strategies, like if you stick to one of the strategies that, that I use, it can help you um, win your trades just with one strategy. But if you mix it with three or more, you're more likely to win your trades. And that's just kind of how I go off of it. Like I, I wanna just, I wanna look at as, as many, um, confirmations as I can get to better my chances of winning the trades. All right. Um, let's look at some other ones, GBP, AUD. Okay, so this was actually one that I was uh, looking at previously for longer term sale, which is kind of showing me what GBP, USD, GBP, JPY, and like, uh, the GBPs are showing me that price is expected to drop down. Um, so with GBP AUD, let me actually erase everything here. So it's definitely at a high right now. Um, price spiked up. It's at this at this high here. Basically in this area here. Um, with GBP AUD, I can see that price is, is uh, already doing a lower high 
Uh, we have the engulfing on the daily. Had that lower high that's that's formed there. High to low. Um, and just based off of looking on this time frame, so I'm expecting for most likely this price to drop down into the the zero percent area here. So price is coming back up currently. I'll actually erase this, do another fibs on smaller time frame. So it's most likely most likely going to come up to the 38.2 area right there where the 200 moving average is at hit and then continue to bounce down. Uh, yeah, pivots around there. Perfect. So yeah, it's it's most likely going to go up to this area and then drop down. Uh, I do see like this inverted head and shoulders pattern on the 15. We have left head, right shoulder. If we do neckline for this, I don't think that neckline is going to be broken. And I think it's going to be hitting like resistance since that neckline's right there. So I think this is going to be hitting off of, uh, off of here and then rallying back down. 38.2, usually aggressive reversal. Lots of things telling me that it's expected to reverse in this area here. So going to look for the for the sell there. And let's see. This would basically be like an area where you would do like a sell, uh, sell limit. Sell into, it can go to negative 61.8, but I would most likely be catching this into negative 27%. Let's see, I'll give you guys some coordinates right now. Uh, entry price, Let's see where 450 is at. Yeah, so, so not placing a sale right when it gets up here, I would actually wait for price to come up here and then continue to drop down. So most likely when price is here, I'll be placing a sell limit. I mean, um, not sell limit, sell stop. Sell stop in this area, 450 down to, I can see hitting the zero, zero area. Um, stop loss would be, usually keep it around here. <laughs> um, and look at this a bit more. I have the first one, a one-to-one -one ratio. One-to-one -one ratio, second one would be around 450. Uh, okay, we'll keep that at 700. 750 price on TP2. Stop loss also at the 440 pip mark. So this one is most likely going to be hitting, um, yeah, just uh, just off of like price action there. Uh, I'm seeing multiple things that are saying it's going to be reversing. Okay, so now I'm going to be looking at AUD to potentially see if it's also confirming because I'm seeing J, uh, GBPs are showing that it's going to be dropping down. I'm going to be also confirming with AUD seeing if it's also going to be dropping. Um, by the way, you uh, 63 people that are still on here, I appreciate you guys for being in here. Um, but we are going to be ending this somewhere around in another like 10 to 15 minutes from now. Um, uh, most likely 10 minutes from now. So th thank you guys for, for being in here. And um, I'll be getting into the Q&A pretty soon as well. So, okay. So 
let's look at some AEDs real quick, AED USD, making sure that things are looking, uh, it should actually be looking bullish for AED if you know, GBP AED is going down. So with AED USD, we can see that it, we'll actually see if it hit its distance here. So it looks like it has some way to go to hit its distance. This entire area is a sell zone from this point to this point. So it's in that sell zone at the moment, um, but it's actually in a perfect position currently to potentially be going up. And the reason uh, why I say like, I, I think it's potentially gonna be going up even though if it's on a downtrend is first off, the distances. So like, you know, the distance from here to here, uh, you know, it still has some way to go, but what you'll notice is what would happen is it doesn't usually go straight down into the take profit area. Um, it'll stop about midway and then it'll come back up doing what's called its retest. And then it will finally finish everything off. So this is what I think is going to be happening. This area right here is a perfect sell area there, seeing that 200 moving average is most likely also gonna be curving down. Um, but also that's where the retest is expected and we see some rejection happening there. Now I'm gonna zoom in. It is showing it's going into, it's a sideways uh, area here. I was to trap it a bit more. Price already broke that resistance and from the downtrend. Now it should be going into the uptrend. Uh, let's see if there's a couple more things that can confirm this. Okay, so here I see left shoulder head, uh, right shoulder that's kind of going down into the right shoulder right now. Um, so since I'm expecting for this area to bounce off and continue going into the uptrend, this is where I'm going to be looking at and it's a good area. Okay. So 15 minute, as I mentioned, that's the lowest time frame that I go down to, uh, 15 minute, I could see there's a potential inverted head and shoulder forming right there. Price is expected to rise up to that level there. This should be buy entry, take profit there. Stop loss will be somewhere below this right shoulder. Uh, so 500's at, so 500, 400, keep that 200. So one to two ratio right there. I uh, don't look at ATR. Um, I saw Armin, you asked that question there. Okay, so um, low to high, try getting this early entry. So price right now is dropping, most likely gonna be dropping into this area and then bouncing off. Um, but until then, I'm actually most likely going to be calling this uh, trade here for a pending buy stop on AED USD. Expecting AED USD to be rising, uh, GBP AED to be dropping. So, going to be looking at that and, <laughs> and seeing what happens there. Um, actually, look at a couple more things. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so let's 
off of what I see here, I, th I think it's, it's going to break through and then do its retest. Um, break through to about here, come back down, doing its retest, where this is where people would get scared and be like, what's going on with AUD, USD, blah, 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 get scared. Probably exit out, those that exit out be losing because of scared money. Um, and then most likely rallying up from there. So either entry right here, or if you want to enter on the retest that potentially is going to happen, um, you'd be getting it on there. And the risk to reward is good. So let's let's say if you're risking a thousand, you know, you're risking a thousand, make two thousand. In my case, it's it's in the higher range. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. Now let's do some Q and A real quick before we hop off here. Um, Okay, so do you place a buy limit or sell limit order? So I mainly do, uh, I, I don't really like limits. There's, you know, there's pending buy stops, pending sell stops. Like th those are the ones that I like the most, the, the sell stops and the buy stops, just because it's going with the momentum of the market. And since it's going in that direction, might as well place the buy and sell towards that direction. And like sell limits and buy limits, you're basically predicting that it's going to be hitting like a resistance and then dropping down. So I don't really like those as as much. Um, Nike don't pay me to tell you, just do it. They pay me to show you. I'll do it again. All right, appreciate the motivation there. <laughs> Um, okay, so do you, let me see, do you enter trades marking four hour as the largest time frame? No, the largest time frame that I'll go out to is the monthly. Um, usually the weekly being the largest, but sometimes the monthly, depending on what I can see on the weekly. Yeah, that's, I hope that answers your question. Um, If I'm looking to team up with other traders, no, not necessarily, just because I do like my own trading. Um, yeah, there's, there's not necessarily a need for, for teaming up with other traders when I'm doing my own trades. Like I, it just doesn't really make sense unless I'm having them do the analysis. But one thing, one thing I do know is that um, when you're in charge of your own account, it does, it, it does um, keep you accountable for your investments, you know, rather than having someone else invest um, for you or anything like that. It's, it does keep you accountable. Okay, so let's see. Do you implement fundamentals into your Forex trading? Good question. So I do a bit of fundamentals. I would say somewhere around like the 10 to 20% is fundamental, but it's not really necessarily looking at what the economy is doing, unless it's kind of like the, the um, overall, but I, I'm mainly looking to see if there's any high impact in the market. And based off the high impact, I look at my technicals. So then I'll see, like, I'll predict what the fundamentals is going to tell me before it happens. And then when the news hits, I look to see which direction it's going and when the breakout happens for the technicals. And then it's just like kind of putting both together. Um, okay, so do I trade gold? Not often. I actually mentioned how trading gold would make sense just because I have gold cars, but yeah, no, I don't. I don't really trade gold. Okay, a um, couple more questions and we're going to be getting off here. By the way, if you guys can put in the chat area where you guys are from, um, which part of the world, I actually like seeing what different parts of the world people are 
are from. Okay. Oh, I just saw Jamaica. Sheesh. SoCal OC by the 55, like right by me then. Atlanta, Nigeria, Jamaica, Las Vegas, Kentucky, Anaheim, Paramount, Florida. Nice. KD. Yeah, what what's actually KD, what's your experience with uh moving out to Ve to Texas? Ask you that because there's a potential. It sucks. <laughs> oh shit. Well that doesn't sound good. Uh, do you trade the news? Answering this question. Um, I actually answered that question previously. I do, I, I do trade the news mixed with technicals. Yeah. So, um, Katie, just, like financials. Yeah, I see definitely the the financials uh, with like Texas area or um, you know Nevada. Like I was in Nevada for about year and a half, two years, saved on taxes last year, paid six figures in taxes. So, and that's because I was in California all of last year. Yeah, it, it's um, definitely not good being in California. <laughs> and lots of people are leaving California just because of uh, all the new things that are happening. Um, all the new changes with Biden, I think it's kind of like, taxing more for the rich so it's definitely like yeah it is not a go <laughs> um okay so and by by the way what do you mean by not the same as california like i, I understand like weather wise like be different or like you know, what, what is it exactly? Like maybe people, um, Texas is a new safe haven for BTC miners. Okay. I actually didn't know about that one. Uh, I don't do any Bitcoin mining myself, so that's probably why I didn't know. Um, KD, what, what's your actual name, KD? Uh, you're, you're mentioning about the credit thing. By the way, those that um, are in here, if you do want, or if, well, if you're in the US, I, I saw someone from Jamaica, that's, this wouldn't really apply to, to you or any, anyone that's out of the US. Um, but I'm actually, actually recently had, uh, had got my team who was, they, they've been working on my credit for a while. And even to this day, they're still working on my stuff. Um, more of like the managing side, you know, when, when it comes to credit, like once you get it to a high level after the, after that high score, um, like if you do any inquiries or applying for certain things, like those things could get removed off your report. So anyways, if anyone's like interested in certain like credit stuff, I can invite you into this, uh, this group um, where I discuss like, like how we can help you out and stuff like that. Uh, let me actually get the link and I'll post it in the chat area. And by the way, I've been working with this, uh, I, I now hire them previously, like I was hiring them more as like freelancers for, for my stuff, but now they're like hired within the but within the company that I started up. So uh, it's, it's the exact same people that helped my stuff. And back then my, my credit was uh, really, really bad. Um, when I was getting started into entrepreneurship, I had, well, if any of you guys know my story, I started around, it was when I was 21. So I'm 26 right now. So that was like five years ago uh, when I started getting into entrepreneurship. And 
um, when I first started, I got evicted from my first place. So that eviction was put onto my report, which, you know, it's basically a, like a collection type of thing where it's owed money. Um, and then you know, I was making some, some like dumb financial decisions with, uh, with credit cards or actually I wouldn't say dumb, but I, I just wouldn't pay them, pay them off because I was more focused on like, you know, learning and educating and I, I wasn't really bring uh in income during that time i was like sacrificing everything so that that definitely brought my score down to like the the 500s um so yeah it's it's taken some time for the for the repair but now it's like it's at the at the high 700s 800s like and it's constantly like kind of in that area yeah, kind of a bit off topic there, but um, let me send in the link here. Oh, I, I did send the link. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, cool. So a um, couple more questions I'm going to be answering. Let's see. Angel, um, one sec. Oh, I think I privately sent it to someone. One sec. There we go. I just sent the link there. It, it's a it's a Telegram link into into private um, private area where it kind of discusses. Oh, shit, I see all of you guys joining in. Um, yeah, but you you don't you don't have to do it. I'm I'm actually you know, being that you guys are part of like the Market Master Academy stuff. Um, just letting you guys know like where so I'm doing like a kind of like case study thing since it's like a newer business, uh, building more like uh, people that I can help out. Um, just letting you guys know as far as like the price range and everything like that. Just so you're not. Um, so, so you know up front. So it's it's normally it would be like eighty five dollars a month, and then uh, like a ninety nine dollars setup fee. Uh, but I'm only looking for case studies right now, so I'm not even going to be charging you guys like eighty five or, or ninety nine. Uh, it would be just forty dollars monthly. Um, and basically, like I, I'll show you guys actually the the website here and kind of what. It, what's included with that like 40 uh the 40 a month so it's basically this one right here um you get assigned a credit agent and then inquiry removals so inquiries is isn't like a huge impact but if you have a lot of like hard inquiries on your reports that's something that can definitely get um get removed uh if you have any late payments any collections tax liens like debts uh, of any sort um those things could be worked on and yeah it's it's legal to remove some of the things you know based off the rights that you have as a as a as a person what is it the ft ft something <laughs> the, the credit agents know all this stuff but uh but yeah the the exact things or the exact methods that were used on my on my reports is the exact things that would be used on yours. And by the way, um, the 40 that would be used to, to get into it, uh, I don't make any profit off of that. So it's, it just mainly goes to the, to the workers and goes into like the service and all that stuff. So to, to me, it's just kind of like something to, to help out. Um, I help you guys out if, if you guys are interested in that. Um, cool. So shoot, there was a good amount of people that, uh, had joined in. Uh, and if you did want to do the, the applying portion, I actually send you guys the link on the telegram. But you, you would just go to the, to the website and then like you would just apply onto, onto this area here. 
the Telegram link. I'll send it again on the chat here. Uh, but yeah, so it, you can put I want to know more or I would actually put the I'm ready to sign up one right there. And then you would just fill this out. Um, I'll contact you, e either me or um, one of the agents will contact you and they'll just be able to help you out. Yeah. Um, okay, let's check out the Q and A's here. Uh, okay, so good question here. When do you normally expect the prices to move towards the zones you mentioned? Um, so I expect it to be, it, it, it's expected to get into that zone, like usually during news announcements or certain things like that. Because those zones, if you notice, it's mainly like breakout areas um, that I'd pointed out. So like Euro USD, the zones right here. So this is like the breakout area. And then, so it's not really when it will get there. It's just uh, like, I, I don't know, is it going to happen tomorrow? Like just based off of what I see here, there's potentially for it to happen by tomorrow, maybe two days. Like it's basically already there. Uh, but doesn't mean I just get in for a sale right away. I look for multiple things. <clears throat> Can I review DXY? The that's a US index. Um, yeah, I can I can check it out. I actually recently found out that there's not just a DXY. DXY is actually good to to know because you know, it's a dollar. Dollar has eighty percent of the market's volatility. Um, but I am, there, there was also like, so that's a dollar index. And then there's also like EXY. Uh, is that it there? Yeah, the Euro currency index. Um, I think there was a GXY too that I, that I saw. When I'm mistaken, no, I don't think so. But, but the EXY, basically, it's just for the euro. So DXY, um, actually, had known that in this area is expected to rise. Right now, it's at a resistance, and usually, you know, right in this area. Usually don't see it hit once, twice, and that's it. Usually it's a three time, the power of three. If, so it's most likely gonna drop down into this area, hit, and then continue to rise up potentially. So we're, we're just gonna see what's gonna happen. Right now it's at that resistance over here. So it's gonna see what happens with, with the dollar and, and how it reacts during this high impact news. Um, but if it if it drops down, then we, we're expecting for like, to see the, you know, the change of the dollar off these areas. If it actually drops down in price, this will be going up since it's AUD USD or GBP USD, it'll be going up. Uh, Euro USD, it'll be going up. So that, that's kind of why I'm like little hesitant to see what's, what's gonna be happening with, with the news and how it's gonna change there. Um, anyways, let's see a couple of things. You're going to hear from me about my credit score. Nice. Actually, I, I want to share with you guys uh, recently. So I'm pulling this up here. Uh, there was someone that had just joined about two weeks ago or so. Um, they were like in the five... 550, 560 range. And there was like quick boost, 28 points, 40, 44 points on Equifax. Uh, can't really see here, but 730 on Experian, um, 42 point increase. So like the, those like 42s uh, increase or like there's just certain things that once it's removed, it was just boosted up real quick. And and then it's also like, what's the goal behind it? Um, it's like, 
one of the things that that I'll use my credit for is like if you see I, I traveled to like I went on a recent travel to the Maldives um, actually the most recent one that I just got back from two days ago was uh, to Chicago no, nowhere super far but um, so all these all these travel locations that I go to, it's actually completely free. Like I don't pay for for my flight. Um, I don't pay for my flight because it's being paid by credit cards. And since it's, since it's money that you're already spending, might as well just get points for it. And like with credit, if and if you get like if you have a good score, you can get good credit cards and give you like the good rewards. You can do all these all these type of credit things. Um, so there's people that would use it for like travel. Some people use it to get money back. Might as well get some money back for what you're spending already. So, and if you use it responsibly, obviously that's that's where it benefits you. But if you're like maxing things out and not paying it off, like you, you can actually, don't mention I said this, but it, even if you max things off and don't pay it off, it's possible to get it removed from your report. But you might not be able to use that bank again just because of bad history so wouldn't suggest that especially if once you get into like amex um statuses and all that stuff um okay so we we are about to get off here good question um someone mentioned about the 40 dollars discount so you actually have to like once you fill out the form and and um, you know, let me know that you came from from MMA, and that's when I'll that's when I'll apply that for you. But if if not, it would be like the the eighty five plus the ninety nine setup fee. So all of that gets completely waived. As I mentioned, there's no profit um, on my end; like it just pays off the the workers. Uh, All right. And by the way, Katie, I, I didn't get your name, but um, if you have my number, it actually, when you fill out the form, you should be receiving a, a text message right away. That would be the, the number that um, that it would be from like me or someone else. That would be uh, messaging you guys. Eight, three, one. Actually, check it out now. Uh, got to open. Let me just confirm I I received it on my end. Oh yeah, K Katie. Uh, you Katie. You Katie. Then I I got your message. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, good question. Do you know when the funding course will be completed? Um, I'm actually in the process of completing it now. There's some new information that I'm getting and more of like what to do, what not to do type of thing. Um, but yeah, that, that's still on the, on the works. Armin, you said, uh, do they help with bankruptcies? Yeah, A anything that's negatively impacting the scores can be uh they they can help with i can help with as well but like i don't i don't put a bunch of time into like the creation of the letters and and, and all that stuff um but it's literally the exact same things that um that was being used on my stuff so i know for sure that, that it works i didn't have bankruptcies but they're uh actually i haven't worked with anyone with bankruptcies just yet there's actually someone new they did the whole 85 and 99 um, that has a bankruptcy. So they're going to be like the first type of uh, type of like case study or I guess not really case study, but oh, um, by the way, those that do get that deal for the 40, um, there is something in return that, that I would want, which is uh, being a case study. So like, 
like I'm already working with some people as case studies, basically building more, um, basically building people that have results. So like this recent one where it went up like 43 points, uh, I think that was like within two, three weeks. Um, that's like the case study. So you, you would have to be okay with sharing your, your reports. Um, you know, we don't have to mention your name, but potentially a video if you can, or, or just like writing us something uh, once things get boosted, obviously. But yeah. Uh, yeah, medical bills that were due, if it's like late payments, um, late payments or collections, any of that is fine. So it's, you can actually see most of the things here, like any late payments, collections, charge offs. Uh, it's just basically the, the accelerator one is anything that's negatively impacting. So it, it could be, it could be literally anything that's negative on there. And if you're okay with us challenging everything, then we'll just go ahead and, uh, and do that. Uh, okay. So yes, uh, Forex did make me wealthy and, you know, with my whole financial system that I use, um, Forex mixed with, uh, or basically investing. So like I, I mainly do Forex, but I also do like crypto. I do stocks, um, stocks yeah uh, i'm getting into the real estate side uh but that's that's on the works right now actually connecting with like certain people that help with uh with the construction side and and basically going to be getting into like fix and flips all right you guys well that's it i extended it a bit longer uh but if you guys have any questions on the credit side you can message there if you have any questions on like trading or anything you can message inside of like the the group channel um and everyone within the academy can help you guys out okay i, I guess last question there what's his opinion on i am academy uh i, I don't like multi-level marketing companies anything that's multi-level i would run far, far away from it. Uh, it's taught me a couple things with multi-level marketing. I've done it in the past, but just the fact of it's not really focused on trading, it's focused on recruiting. I don't like that. Um, I don't believe in that. And that's why I, I didn't like make Market Masters Academy as a multi-level marketing, even though if that could be like a quick way to boom, I don't like that stuff. And I'd rather people actually get into trading than recruit people. All right. So appreciate you guys. Have a good night. Thank you for joining in. And if you want to watch this video on YouTube, it will be, it's actually live right now, but after this live, it's going to be uh, pre-recorded for, for you guys to watch. Thank you guys. And we'll see you next week. See you guys.